Alright, so I, I said this last week, but you're not going to see test questions like one through four, but obviously you need to know those in order to continue. One and two you actually don't use so much in this section, but you'll see the importance of it when we start to get into one. We, we talked about, I'll show you today how to use the calculator. You need to know it there, but you also need to know it when we move into um, multiplying and adding and subtracting matrices, which is 7, 5. So we're counting the number of rows and then the number of columns, which means that the order for number one would be what? One by three. Whoa. And then for number two, it would be? Three by two. Three by two. Good. Number three and four, you're writing either the matrix from the system or the system from the matrix. So in this case, it's the matrix. So it would be six, negative two, negative four, ten, and then zero, five, four, five. You do need that zero. Okay? It's got to hold the place of the spot that should be there. You don't need the little dots, but if you did add them in, they would be here, okay? We eventually lose them anyway, so I wouldn't stress too much about having them there. For four, so we move from left to right, this would be X, this would be Y, this would be Z, and the last one is the constant. So I get five X, I don't need a Y, plus two Z equals three, and then six X minus five Y plus seven Z equals negative 10. I would not mark it wrong if you had a zero Y, but honestly, you don't need it. And you're not even going to be answering questions like, you'll see today we're going to use these to take the next step out of our uh, re reduced row echelon and our row echelon to then solve the system. Questions on one through four? Okay. And five was writing the matrix in row echelon form. So we're going to take first and rewrite this as a matrix, which would be one, negative two, three, nine, negative 1, 3, 0, negative 4, and 2, negative 5, 5, and 17. So I gave the recommendation last week of how like an order could work. You don't have to do it this way, but most of the time it works, so I would try, I would recommend it. The first thing I do is try to get a 1 in the top left corner, which is already done for us, yes. And then the second thing I would try to do is get a 0 below that 1. So how could I could get a zero in that second row first column? Where would you need a zero below that one? So this one is here, right? Look, that one is there. That's my first goal. Yeah. And then the zero underneath that one. So I want this to become yeah. a zero here. Two to become a zero? No, I want the negative one to become a zero, right underneath the, the one. She's going as a negative one goes first, but then eventually it will be a zero. Right. So I, I'll, I'll, this is what I suggested last week, is get a one here and then work your way down and over with the zeros which would mean that the first zero I want to get is here. You do not have to do it this way. And then two, then five. And then, two and then five, yes. One. What about the one in the middle? Like so I would never try for a one before I got a zero, except you for the first one. All the zeros first. Exactly, because you could try to get a one there, but then you have to work backwards to get a zero, and then you'll lose the one. You'll have to get the one back again. So, so go to the zeros first, because you can't ever change a zero once it's a zero, right? So then how would I get that zero in that spot where the negative one is? Add the Add one and two. Good. Row one plus row two. <coughs> one, negative two, three, nine, negative one, three, zero, four. I have to get row one as well as I have to figure out how to get a zero where that negative one is. Okay. So which means I can either multiply by a non-zero number Nothing I multiply negative one by is going to get that zero because I can't multiply by zero. Or I can add it with another row. So if I can find a row that has a positive one, it's going to cancel that out, right? Oh, okay. Gotcha. So that's what I found. Nick? Yes. So I cannot stress this enough. I know you guys are super, super smart. So smart you don't need to write stuff down. But I, as much as I enjoy, I told you so would rather not have to say it to you when you lose points because you have skipped a step because you've done it in your head and then gotten your system wrong, okay? Take the time to write it out. One, for you, homework-wise, you can go back and you can figure out what you did and where you went wrong. Two, when I go to take your, grade your test and you miss a step, it's the only way I'm going to know where it went, okay? So from here, I get zero, one, three, and five. And then I can either replace row one or row two with that but because row one is already the way I want it to be, I'm working on row two, that's what I'm gonna replace. 
So now row two becomes one. Well, row one is one, negative two, three, and nine. Row two would be zero, one, three, and five. And row three is two, negative five, five, and 17. Bianca. When would I move them? So if I, um, if the one, if the very first row was maybe on the bottom to begin with, I would start by switching them. And then we'll do an example later today where we'll talk about another reason why I would switch it. All right, so now I want to zero here where this two is. I can't do that with row two, which means I have to use row one. What could I do with row one so that when I add it to row three, it will cancel out? Negative two, R1. Good, so negative two, R1 plus R3. So negative two here, negative two, four, negative 6, negative 18, plus 2, negative 5, 5, and 17. 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And that replaces row 3. So 1, negative 2, 3, 9, 0, 1, 3, 5, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Now I want to 0 here where the negative 1 is. If I combine with row three and row one, I lose the zero I just got. So this last zero, you will always use row two for. So what can I do so that that zero or that negative one will become zero? R2 plus R3. Good, R2 plus R3. And that's my new R3. I have all the zeros where I need them to be. The last thing I need to do is make sure this diagonal is ones. So I've got two out of the three. How could I change row three so that the two becomes a one? Good. Multiply by that reciprocal, which would be one half. So if you did it differently, in a moment I'm going to show you how you can do this in a calculator. If you plugged it into the calculator, your row echelon, which is what this is, this is not reduced row, this is just row echelon, can actually be different from your neighbors or from the calculator. The only thing that would have to be the same is the bottom row. Because what happens when you take it and you plug it back in, it might change your value, okay? But the overall answer would be the same. When you solve this, your X, Y, Zs should be the same. But the actual system above what happens in that bottom row might actually be different. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Questions on row echelon. So that's the diagonal of ones with the zeros below. Anthony. So you can multiply it? You can multiply a row, you can switch rows, and you can add rows. Can you multiply a row and add it to another row? Yep. Or no? Yeah, yeah. You just can't, you can multiply by a non-zero number, so you can't multiply by zero. That's the first goal, and then work your way down and over for the zeros. And then the ones after that. One. Um, so what are the like, rules for the echelon form? It has to be a diagonal of ones and then zeros below it. What if it's like all zeros? So it won't be when you're solving systems, but if you did see a system, if you saw a matrix already set up and it's asking you to identify if it is in row echelon form, mm -hmm. then, and there's a row of zeros, all zeros has to be at the bottom. That's the only rule. Okay. But then the rest of it stays the same. But you won't see that. Now that we're solving these systems, you shouldn't see that. Isn't it like one, there needs to be a one at row, one column, one, and then all zeros at the bottom? Or am I thinking something like that? No, if there is all zeros, it has to be all the way at the bottom. And then there should still be that diagonal of ones with a zero below it. Okay. So the diagonal still takes place. It's just that on the very bottom, they could be all zeros. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. We're good on the warm-up. Yep. That gets you what? If you have all zeros on the bottom? That's, if it, that's just to see if it's in row echelon form. What? It's just the, the question, like if you're already given a matrix and it's asking you if it's in row echelon form. 
But when we're solve like from here on out, you're not going to see that because we're solving a system and the systems aren't going to be all zeros on the bottom. But if it, if it does, it has it's still rho echelon. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to finish 7-4, which is still matrices and systems of equations. This is the last of the stuff that will be covered on your test, which is Thursday. So we're going to learn what to do with these forms. Now that we know how to get them into rho echelon, we're going to practice reduce rho echelon, and then we're going to know how to get from there. I'm going to skip this example. We're going to do this tomorrow because this is basically um, what we just did, just different numbers. All right, so this is kind of like that next step. So let's say that somebody that we had already worked to get this into this form, which is reduce rho echelon, right? Diagonal of one, zeros above and below. It says write the solution represented by the augmented matrix. So if I asked you to take this out of the matrix and write it as a system, what would your first row be? X equals negative three and Y equals five. So this is our whole goal, is to eventually get it into the format in which we can take it out to get a solution. Yep. Okay, so we're going to talk about two different methods. And from there, you'll know what to do. So you want to learn instructions here. Pay attention to what it says. One of your questions on your test is going to say, use Gaussian elimination with back substitution, which is what this first thing is. And the second one's going to say Gauss Jordan, which we'll get to in a minute. So Gaussian elimination with back substitution you go through the steps we've already gone through with row echelon. So you write the augmented matrix, you use the elementary row operations to rewrite it in row echelon form, okay, which means the diagonal of ones, the zeros only below it. From there, you'll write your linear equation. So you'll rewrite out that system. And when you do, it's a triangle system. You'll get an X, a Y, a Z in the top line. You'll get a Y and a Z in the second line. And you'll get just the Z in the third line. And then you'll back substitute in the information to get your answer. So we're going to start there and we'll baby step our way in. So we're going to do just two variables. Work your confidence up. And then we'll go three. So if I'm to rewrite this into a system, it would be, I mean, into a matrix, one, two, seven, two, one, eight. I already have the one in the top left, so the next step would be to get a zero where that two is. How could I do that? Until the first row got negative two. Good. Negative two, R1 plus R2. So negative two, negative four, negative 14, two, one, eight. And then I replace row two with that. So one, two, seven, zero, negative three, negative six. So with a two variable, all I need is the diagonal of ones and the zero below. So I have the zero, but I need to make that negative three a one. How would I do that? Negative one third. So my top row stays the same. One, two, seven, bottom row becomes zero, one, two. So this is rho echelon, not reduced rho echelon, which means once I take it out of here, which would be x plus 2y equals 7 and y equals 2, I then have to use back substitution. So I take the y, plug it in to get to the x. And my solution is 3, 2. So it's yet another way to solve a system. Now you have elimination, substitution, graphing, and Gaussian elimination back substitution. Questions so far? So we go three variables. Do you want the answer yes, good question. Do I want the answer in coordinate form? And yes, I do. X, then Y. And if it was three, X, then Y, then Z. If it's just three. X yes. equals three, then it's three comma whatever. You have to get both the X and the Y. Oh, so you have to plug it, okay. No, you already have the Y, oh, yep. So, it's three, two. so the first thing I'm gonna do here is write out the matrix. Three, negative two, one, 15, 
negative 1, 1, 2, negative 10, 1, negative 1, negative 4, and 14. Now, what's the first thing I want to do? Good. I want the 1 at the top, so I'm going to switch row 1 and row 3. You could have multiplied an entire row 1 by 1 third, but what's going to happen? You're going to get fractions when you don't want them, okay? Sometimes you can't avoid them, and they, they'll happen, but if you can't avoid them, my recommendation would be to do so. So this becomes 1, negative 1, negative 4, 14, negative 1, 1, 2, negative 10, and 3, negative 2, 1, and 15. Now I want to work my way down with the zero. So I want a zero where that negative one is. Add it, right? Yeah. Add it. Add row one and row two. And row one was already set, so I am replacing row two. What did we just get that's never happened to us before? Zero. Two zeros. Where do I want two zeros to be? The bottom. The bottom. Can I switch it? Yes. Okay. So I already, I got two. I got lucky. I got two and one, but this is to answer your question before, right, Bianca? This is another situation in which I would just switch them. I'm going to switch row two and row three. Because I, I only need one zero in the second row, but I need two in the bottom. So instead of having to work and then work back again, I save myself some work. So now I want a zero where the three is. How do I do that? Good. Okay, now I have all my zeros, but I want the diagonal of ones. How could I change that negative two at the bottom to be a one? Negative one half. And I'm in row echelon form. So where we were stopping before, now we want to keep going. I want to solve this system. So I'm going to take that matrix and I'm going to rewrite it into the system that it is. So this would be x minus y minus 4z equals 14, 0x, 1y plus 13z equals negative 27, and z equals negative 2. And there's my triangle system, right, where I've got one variable already solved for. I'm going to take that one variable, plug it into the second row. So y plus 13 times negative 2 equals negative 27. y minus 26 equals negative 27. Add the 26 and I get negative 1. So then the y goes and the z goes. And x equals 5. And my answer is going to go x, then y, then z.
And with all the extra time that you have at the end of your test, which probably won't happen, let's just say you work super fast, you get it right on the first try, you're good to go. You don't end up with crazy fractions like 1,742 over 56, because that's probably not gonna be a right answer. I could take that and plug it back in and check it. Wait, why did you write two score? All right, the second and final method is called Gauss-Jordan elimination. So the difference between Gaussian elimination with back substitution and Gauss-Jordan is that Gauss-Jordan, you go to reduced row echelon. So you get your diagonal of ones with the zeros above and below it. You do reduced row echelon. And then when you write your system, it's already solved. The first line is your X, the second line is your Y, the third line is your Z. There's no back substitution. So you have to work further on the matrix end, but the payoff comes at the end. There's no back substitution. So the first thing I'm gonna do, first of all, pay attention to the directions, because again, you'll have to know which one is which. This is Gauss-Jordan, which means reduce row echelon. So I'm gonna get the system, which would be negative two, six, negative 22, and then one, two, and negative nine. So the first goal is the one in the top left corner. How could I get it? Switch row one and row two. How else could I get it? Good, multiply by a negative one half, which this time wouldn't be so bad because they're all even. I'd get nice whole numbers, okay? But you can always switch it. So if I switch it, I get one, two, negative nine, negative two, six, negative 22. Then from here, I want to work my way down and I want to zero where that negative two is. How could I get it? Two row one plus row two. So I've got the zero where I need it to be. Now I can move over to the 10. How can I make 10 a one? Good, the reciprocal are one tenth. And this is Gauss Jordan, which means I need it in reduced row echelon, which means I need a zero where that two is. How do I do that? Good. Negative two, row two plus row one. So the payoff here comes that this would be x equals negative one. This would be y equals four, negative four, and there's no back substitution. You get your answer straight from your matrix. Questions on that one? So obviously, they won't be that easy. You're gonna get a three by three, or three by four, actually. Three variables, like this one to the three, okay? And this is the same one we already did, so I'm gonna go back to the one that we had before. So we're assuming we already worked for it to be in row echelon form, but we gotta keep going. We gotta get this into reduced row echelon. So on the pattern, top one, zero, zero, work right, I would then move up. So I would go to this 13 here and try to get a zero where that is. Oh, you just have to keep going. Yup. Oh, you did. <laughs> how do you get a zero, how do you get a zero there? You're trying to get now all these to be zeros. Negative 13 times R3 plus R2. Good. Negative 13 R3 plus R2. What was your question? So you do like the diagonal of ones and then you move to the 13? You don't have to, but if that's a one, it's a lot easier to multiply that times a number to cancel it with whatever's above it. 
Because sometimes, and sometimes you can't avoid it. But let's say that that was like a one, one, six, and this is a five. Let's just say you're here. And I want to cancel this five out. I have to change both of them, which could happen. You might not be able to avoid it. You'd have to multiply R2 by like a negative six and R3 by a five. Oh. If you do that zero first. Does that make sense? So which one would you do first? Depends on what's here. If the six, if I could do one six and keep an, a whole number on that bottom row, I would do the one first. But if there was a fraction here, like if this was seven and I had to deal with one sixth and seven sixths, then I would do the other one first. Kayla. So um, there's no right or wrong order, right? So nope. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'll move up to this one. Where that negative four is, I want a zero. Four R three plus R one <clears throat> and the last zero is that one. So I would just add row two and row one. Will we have like only one of these on the test? You're gonna get one of each. So this top says x equals 5, second says y equals negative 1, and bottom says z equals negative 2. So the payoff comes at the end. There is no back substitution. And your answers obviously should have matched, it right? It doesn't Same matter question. that we switch rows in the beginning? Nope. As long as you have that diagonal of 1s at the end, yeah, it won't matter. It's still x, y, z. Yep. And that's why when, and I'll show you that so there's questions on your homework that say to use a calculator. So for I period, you guys, we didn't get to that today. Hold those off for tomorrow, so do the rest of it. But then I'll show you. You can do this, you can solve this system in a calculator by entering in the matrix and hitting reduce row echelon and it will give you your system, okay? The difference is you're not obviously gonna, oh, that would be nuts. I'm not gonna give you your graphing calculator for your test, but standardized tests, nothing stopping you from using it there. So you can drive any system. <clears throat> Okay, so on these calculators, there's a little menu that says matrix. It's above the x, negative 1. If I hit second, x, negative 1, I get this. Okay, so again, I got here from doing second, x, negative 1. I got to the matrix menu. The first thing you have to do is arrow over to edit to enter in your matrix. So I'm going to hit edit. And then it's asking me what the order of the matrix is. So because these have three rows and four columns, they would be a three by four. And then it's gonna give me all of those. And I'm gonna type in the matrix that we ended up with with this last example. So before we even got it into um, row echelon, it was three, whoops. Three, negative two, 1, 15, that's an 8, because I can't see my fingers, 15, uh, negative 1, 1, 2, negative 10, 1, negative 1, negative 4, and 14. And then I have to get out of the matrix menu, so I hit second quit, brings me back to my home screen, and then I go back to that same menu, second x negative 1 where the matrix is, but this time I go over to where it says math, 
and you scroll down to A and B, which is where REF and RREF is. So REF is row echelon form, and RREF is reduced row echelon form. So if we want to solve the system, we want it in reduced row echelon form. And then you got to name the matrix. So I go back to second matrix, and I hit enter on A because that's where mine is. I hit enter. And there is my reduced row echelon form and the solution to the system, which would have been 5, negative 1, 2. Oh, that was good timing. All right. So, again, I, you just did, like, I, there's not that many questions for tonight, but obviously they take a little bit longer. Have a good day, guys. You're welcome. Have a great day, ladies. Bye. You were going to tell her for yeah. No, no, no. It's such a touchy subject. Like, you can't not mention it in school. I like, know. We both had it. Like, we, were, like, yeah. we were together. Yeah. She actually opened her letter in front of me. I know her family was there. So I was like, no. You have a you large crowd. You yeah. did not heed the warning. I don't know. Because, like, we kind of, like, forgot that we that forgot. Was the and then, like, literally my whole family was with her. And then my whole family was like, yay, Maria. And then they, like, turned to me and they were like, do you want to open your letter? And then back of my mind, I'm like, Maria's going to, like, literally sob if I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> this is such like an awkward situation. <laughs> so I open it and then gotta get in. So I get in and then we got into the same term. Too. And then yeah, which literally. is what summer or fall? Summer. summer. Do it. It sucks. Yeah. It's such a good decision. I got in. I got deferred. I cried, but I got deferred yeah. from fall to summer, and it's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Aww. We're going on a road trip. We're yeah. gonna go see it this weekend. I'm so excited. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need. Okay. I have a question. This one too. She's a swamper now too. Yeah. Makeup, Marissa Brackett took a makeup yeah. quiz with me on Friday and she couldn't even focus. She was so freaked out about it. So I was like, Do you know about Marissa? That, that and she so said, Yeah, she got in. Yeah. And I was like, Do you know about Dominic? And she's like, No. Dominic. So I like waited today. She got, she got it. Like, yeah. is Dominic just, just, I want him to tell me because I'm not going to ask him. Uh -huh. And he, he, he told me. But I mean, it's